like this close call in Ontario on a vital freeway bridge. Late afternoon, transports were going north and south. And all of a sudden, there was a loud crack. A decades-old design flaw that nearly led to tragedy. It was obvious that we had to report this there, and it was major catastrophe. This fail was far too close for comfort. Latchford, deep in the interior of Ontario, is proud to be one of the smallest towns in the province. George Lefebvre is former mayor. It's a great place to live and it's a beautiful location. We're nestled here along the banks of the Montreal River and Bay Lake. We're surrounded on three sides by water, which is quite unique. The only way south out of town is over this 110 meter bridge. It's extremely important because it's a landmark for our community. It's a monument to Sergeant Aubrey Cousins, one of Canada's 16 Victoria Cross winners in the Second World War, who was born here in Latchford. It certainly is a big deal in the town. It's not just a big deal for Latchford. This bridge carries one of Canada's most important highways over the Montreal River. This bridge allows Canada to be connected. Basically, it's the northern route of the Trans-Canada Highway, and it's absolutely vital to keep this connecting link to the north. Those magnificent arches are unique along number 11 highway. Latchford's iconic crossing is what's known as a tide arch bridge. Although much bigger, Toronto's Burlington Skyway works the same way. Civil engineering professor Lydell Weave explains. Just like the Cousins Memorial Bridge, this is an arch type structure. And the job of the arch, this curved part going over the top, it's really what's doing the work of carrying the load. The deck that holds the bridge, it's hanging from these hangers. They carry the load up to the arch, and then the arch carries it down to the piers on the two sides. The hangers are critical to this bridge because the deck can't carry the load by itself. Bridge hangers do exactly what the name says. They might be steel bars, cables, or box girders, but whatever the design, the bridge deck literally hangs from them. Latchford's bridge originally had 12 hangers on each side, suspending the deck from the twin arches. The hangers were connected top and bottom with giant bolts called pins. These connections allow the deck to sway with the movement of traffic. Steel is super strong for supporting structures. But if you keep bending it and working it, the metal can start to fatigue. So lots of bridges have flexible connections built in. They are crucial to durability and safety. Aubrey Cousins spanned the Montreal River from 1960. But after more than 40 years of loyal service, it faced a serious challenge. On January the 14th, 2003, during a ferocious cold snap, Jocelyn Roy was doing what he loves best, driving his rig cross country. Truck always been a part of uh, my world. It's in my blood, this kind of truck here. Right now we're heading north. That's the direction I was heading to Oshawa. Temperatures were 30 below zero, but Jocelyn was on a roll. So just as I pull on the highway, another big truck uh, was following me. It was a logger. Like we were coming on a good pace there. And uh, right about here. It was right as we entered the bridge there. I heard a big boom. I thought it I had a flat tire. So by the time I looked in my mirror, a bunch of snow fell, and when I looked ahead, my eyes kind of went down with the snow, and I saw the, the, the bridge that was collapsed. The deck had dropped two meters towards the freezing Montreal River. I bounced, I hit the roof, but then by the time I stopped, it was almost like 1,000 feet past the bridge. It was obvious I, we had to report this there, and uh, it was major catastrophe.
well, the, the deck of the bridge had dropped down. Basically, if you have a, a situation such as that, and if the traffic isn't stopped, uh, death could occur. Uh, much greater damage could occur to, to equipment, to, to, to vehicles. Anything going over the north end would have dropped into a gap, and anything coming from the south end would eventually have reached that point. The big concern was to ensure that nothing was coming north, got it stopped, reported it, everything to the police. So it was a lot of reaction by a very few people to ensuring that safe passage was assured and that no vehicles got onto the bridge and caused further damage. The bridge had failed. Luckily for Jocelyn, it didn't fully collapse. The key is the word because uh, the way the collapse happened there, it kind of went in the V there, like maybe four feet on one side and six, seven feet on the other side. So it was just a slope, a big slope. I was lucky. It could have been the straight fall right into the concrete pier. But with the bridge down, motorists faced a mammoth three-hour detour. This might have been a relatively small bridge in a very small town, but the impact of the collapse was enormous. People had to detour. They had to go down through Quebec or go over to Highway 144. Of course, for commercial transportation, they need special licensing to go through Quebec. So it was a real problem. All of a sudden, we'd left or lost our connecting link between Northern Ontario and Southern Ontario, between Western Canada and Eastern Canada. This, like, this is the Trans-Canada Highway. Well, it was a bad day for the whole Northeast. Frustrated commuters wanted to know what had caused the sudden collapse. At just over 40 years old, the bridge should have safely carried traffic for decades to come. Engineering professor Lydell Weeb explains. When you build a bridge, you for sure you intend for it to last. It's very rare to have this kind of failure. You, when I go over a bridge, I'm not worried that it's going to collapse underneath me. The reason for the failure was blindingly obvious. Three broken steel hangers. So the hangers are what are carrying the load for the bridge, and those hangers, over a number of years, they, they fractured. There were a few kind of stages to it. The first hanger uh, is the one that seems to have gone first, and it seems like it fractured first and wasn't noticed for years. Once one hanger failed, it was just a matter of time before a second, then a third. It might have taken years, but that bridge was only going in one direction, down. The big question was what had caused them to fracture in the first place. On the day of the fail, temperatures had plummeted 30 degrees below freezing. Temperature has a big impact on the performance of steel. Basically, when warm, it can be flexible. It can deform without losing its strength. It's called being ductile. But below a certain temperature, it loses that ductility. and becomes brittle. Instead of flexing, it can crack. But this area is no stranger to extreme cold, so investigators knew there must be more at play. Then they found something unexpected inside the arch span. At the top of the hanger rods, where they were kind of hidden inside of the arch, there's a threaded portion just like at the end of this bolt. And there are nuts on top of there to hold it in there. What the investigation showed was that for some reason, someone had filed down some of the threading in there. The reasons for that aren't totally clear. It could be to get rid of some defect that they saw, or it could be that that created a defect. But whatever the cause, that was where the fracture started in the critical hanger rod. Having located the source of the fractures, investigators realized why the damage hadn't been detected earlier. When the bridge was built, the top of the hangers were enclosed inside the steel arch spans, so they couldn't be inspected, and the damage was never spotted. Further investigation revealed yet another factor. The pins that should have allowed the hanger rods to sway were corroded solid. What had actually happened is that the pins had seized, and so we start getting this kind of response in there. And you can see that when we do that, there's a lot more stress on the hanger. With seized pins, the steel hanger rods were forced to flex rather than sway. It didn't take long for metal fatigue to set in. Steel fatigues when it is repeatedly stressed or strained. If it happens over and over at the same point, the metal starts to degrade or fatigue, 
and ultimately it will crack. What happens in that case is something like what happens with a paper clip. If I take a paper clip and I start bending it back and forth, I'm not strong enough to break this on my own in one go. But if I go back and forth several times, eventually this paper clip will break. Damaged hanger rods subjected to decades of fatigue combined with the extreme cold finally pushed the bridge to breaking point. So over a number of years, for all of these different reasons that we've talked about, the, we had one hanger that failed, and then that lasted a few years with no one noticing, and then another one failed, and again, no one noticed. And then when the third one went, that was really what led to the, to the failure. The 43-year-old bridge was beyond repair. But with five decades of new engineering knowledge to draw on, and lessons learned from the failure, the replacement is built to last. With the new bridge, the solid steel hangers were each replaced with four steel cables. So not only are they more flexible, but if one should break, the bridge will continue to function safely until it can be repaired. <laughs>